Hello there. Almost exactly a year ago, I put out a video featuring my Q4 e-tron with the Thule roof box on it to see how much it affected the range. The box in question was an Atlantis 780, which is a 470 litre box. Now this year we decided we needed a bigger box, so we've gone for a Kami 510, which is a 510 litre box. So it's a bit wider, slightly shorter, not quite as tall. A bit more internal volume. So it's a fairly big box for the size of car. We were heading away for the weekend from our house, which is just south of Edinburgh, down to Yorkshire, just north of Settle. So we charged it to 100% on the destination charger at the bottom of the street. And because we're going to do a little charging while we're away, I'm going to put the battery protection back on to limit the charge to 80%. As you can see, we're showing 100% and I've reset the long-term memory back to zero. And we'll reset the short-term memory too. The range is shown as 252 miles, which I think is pretty optimistic. So I've used the app to send the destination to the car. The route is being calculated. And there we go. That's a calculating the route. That's over 160 miles. Now, we are taking the dogs with us in the car. They're not going to make it all that way. So I'm just going to the tour plan here. I'm going to add a destination. I think we'll stop at TB Services. We've got some chargers there. We'll do the dog walk, and if there's a charger available, We'll get some charge while we're there. The route the is plan. being calculated. It's estimated we'll get there with 42% of the services. Now, if you've ever wondered what 510 litres looks like, it's those bags plus these bags. None of which are particularly heavy, it's just food and clothes. And that filled the box up to capacity. But that meant the boot was free for Floyd and Tiger. For the journey itself, we stuck to the speed limits. I did have the car in efficiency mode. But I used cruise control where possible, so set the cruise control for 70 on the motorway. We had the aircon on in eco mode, with the temperature sent to its lowest setting. And we just had the fan speed set so it wouldn't blast too much cold air. When we arrived at the services, we had 37% remaining, so 5% less than the car I thought initially, and we'd managed 2.9 miles per kilowatt hour. And it was fairly windy, and we did have the aircon on. And the southbound side of TB services only has four chargers, two of which were actually being used by cars charging, and the other two, the cars were sitting without charging. The charge was completed, but the people hadn't come back from them yet. It wasn't that much better on the Tesla side. There were a couple of spaces opened up when I took this photo, but it was pretty full on a Friday afternoon. We weren't particularly needing a charge here. We didn't have to get to our destination. So we just headed on down the road. And when we stopped to get some groceries at a supermarket, we popped the car on the Instavolt charger there and took on a little bit extra electricity. The bulk of the journey was A roads and motorways. However, the last eight miles were single track road. We didn't pass that many cars, and most people were on the move over to create a bit of space. Obviously, not this guy in the Range Rover, because why would he take his 4x4 off road slightly? Didn't even actually touch the grass. When we arrived at our destination, we had managed 2.9 miles per kilometer hour. Now, unfortunately, I got a bit carried away in the excitement of actually arriving. I forgot to take a photo of that, so you just have to take my word for it. 2.9 miles per kilowatt hour, which wasn't terrible given that we'd had the aircon on the entire way. 
and I wasn't doing anything to drive particularly efficiently other than having the car in efficiency mode. The car sat for most of the weekend, although we did pop out to get some lunch, which meant going back down the single track road again. And we found a little pod point, a seven kilowatt one, just to top up the electricity we'd used that afternoon. So fast forward to this morning, we had 70 miles of range remaining at 31% and it was shown as 57 miles to get back to the services. That wasn't actually correct, that was to the southbound side. It was just slightly under that. So we got everything loaded back on and off we went. Slightly warmer again today, so aircon was back on and the same set as before. We did meet the occasional hold up on the way back to the main road. The road back to settle peaked at 1,415 feet roughly. But remarkably, just before we got back in the motorway, when we were stopped at some traffic lights, We'd managed five miles per kilowatt hour. True to form though, as soon as the speed went back up on the motorway, we were back down to 3.8 miles per kilowatt hour by the time we arrived at the services. Now the northbound side has many more chargers than the southbound side. So we had no problem parking up a charger, just use a debit card to pay for it. And it's good to see some other Q4s when we were out and about as well. The car was estimating 40 minutes to get back to 80% and it started off at 80 kilowatts per hour and gradually went up. It peaked in the 90s and then dropped back down. 40 minutes was plenty of time for us to take the dogs for a walk, do a quick loo stop, get some food in us and that was exactly 40 minutes to get back to the car. So we used 53 kilowatts to get back up to 80%. At 64 pence a kilowatt hour, that works out at 34 pounds. Eighty percent was shown as about 170 miles of range, and we only need 120 miles to get home. So we could have charged slightly less, but I didn't want to arrive back with zero charge and have to go and find a charger straight away. Overall, the journey back over 176 miles was 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour, which is about 10% better than we managed on the way down. Now, everything else was the same. The HVAC controls were set to the same values. The fan speed was the same. So the only real difference was the weather. It was a bit less windy and slightly warmer today. Overall then, we managed 3.2 miles per kilowatt hour. Now, that's a good chunk off what I would have expected if I had a no roof box but also it's marginally better than this time last year with the smaller roof box. So last year we did 2.9 miles per kilowatt hour and averaged 42 miles per hour. So the speed was comparable, but this year with this roof box, the efficiency was 10% better. I'd still say it's about 15 to 20% worse than I would get with no roof box though. And what does that all mean in financial terms? Well, assuming that I filled the car back up to 100% at my local charger, that'd be just over £25 to refill. So the total cost, £76.47, which given that we were using what I would call premium electricity, the expensive chargers, I think that's okay. So conclusions, well, as you'd expect, putting a roof box on, does hammer your range a bit but the weather can make a 10% difference it turns out and the shape of your roof box can make a 10% difference so it might not have the impact you would expect but it might it might be just as bad as you expect top quality consumer advice there
a roof box might or might not be terrible for your range. Okay, that's all I've got for you in this video. Remember to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.